they almost like wanted to set the precedence of a zero tolerance. Yeah, thing. there was a, absolutely, and I, you know, and I've said this a lot. You know, London's ended up with a style of graph that it kind of deserves. You know, because there's always been this no tolerance. You know, until recently, mm. I think. Mm. I think it's changed now, but you know, this no tolerance. We won't tolerate. We'll paint it brown. We'll clean it off. We won't. You know, we'll put people in prison. You know, it's always been that attitude, like as a city, towards it. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? And that it hasn't been like that. And, and you think that reflects in the style? Yeah, so I think you ended up like in the nineties, in my opinion, with this style which was just like a fuck you style. Yeah. It was just like, you know Yeah, diamond cut, bang, silver, yeah. Da, 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 yeah. Yeah, just bang. You yeah. know what I mean? In your face. I don't care if it's ugly, I don't care if it's pointy, it's there. Yeah. aggressive, yeah. it's there. Killer killer podcast killer killer official dot com. <laughs> Street Culture TV. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. Killer Killer. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Killer Podcast. Um, big shout out to our sponsors, Hoddle Warriors crew over at the Crypto Moon Boys Hideout. That's some NFT business for you. Here we go again, ladies and gentlemen. Killer Killer Podcast live and direct. Central London, as central as you need to be. Jeez, every week I'm saying the same thing because it's facts, all right? Home Street Culture. If you want more information, go to Television. It's the app, free download for all your street culture sports. Um, inside the house, I'm a happy chappy. Took a long time to get him in, but we got him in. Like an Ikea opening in here. Old site, ACR, the building legends from mid 80s. Oh, yeah! Merc, code inside the place. How are we, gentlemen? Oh, good to see you. <laughs> here we are. Well, here we are. It'll take a little yeah. while, but we got here. Yeah. Yes, that's right. That's right. <laughs> a lot of uh, cancellations. Yes. A lot of um, can't make it, can't do this, can't do that. A yeah. lot of international travelling, Merc. You're an international, you're a seasoned traveller across the States, aren't you? Uh, well, sort of. Well, I've done LA twice this year. I'm going to New York again later in the year. Uh, did um, LA and uh, New York last year. Good times. It's yeah. like it helps if you've got friends out there. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it does help. How many others have them? Code, where have you travelled from, my brother? Uh, Labrick Grove. Grove. All the way. Come on. Yeah. That's, a that's, a, that's, a, that's a mighty trait. <laughs> that's one hell of a hill you had to climb. Yeah, there, yeah, I was just saying, like, that, that hill kills me when, I, when I'm cycling. I didn't cycle today. No, but, no. Yeah. Yeah, 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 brutal. Uh, Labrick Grove, the, 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 arguably the mecca mm. of, of hip hops, uh, descending into uh, into uh, London and, and the UK, right? Yeah, man. You were saying, Mert, just before we started, because obviously on the wall, you, you can see, because we decided not to go with the pixelation, but on the wall there is a Faramont Simon Says, which was a raucous original copy. You helped the UK versions of that release yeah i did a lot of work for raucous back in the 90s and like late yeah late early 2000s Stop so it. like yeah company flow uh end to end burners wasn't it end to end burners with the phase two artwork we did um yeah i did yeah simon says yeah mm. did black on both sides miss fat booty and it usually meant i got loads of free promos and stuff like that i got the um <laughs> I got a Ronnie size version of Simon Says for my birthday. Crazy. It was a white label. That was quite nice. A promo. Yo. It was all good. It's in your blood, isn't it? This this whole you yeah. know graphic design. That's pretty much what I do. I work at an ad agency. That's my job. I do retouching. I do graphic design. That's my uh, bread and butter. That's I've been I've been on Max since nineteen eighty seven. So eighty <laughs> seven. Yeah, started on my YTS team. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. And look where it landed. Yeah. Man, ACR comes with a whole heap of good baggage. We're talking about early. A you guys were some of the first uh, inductees to uh, to steal in in London, uh, getting the names out there and up there on the trains before. You know, I mean, of course there were others. There were others. Mm -hmm. We oh, had, yeah. the, you know, but um, you were there. You you guys were there. We were. We were definitely there for a really like. Um, prolific short period. We were fucking everywhere. Yeah, we had, we had a bit of a burst. <laughs> <laughs> give us the like. Give us the. Give us the lines. Where were you rocking the most? Code. Give us some uh, coordinates. We, what lines were you? So it started on because I'm from Brentford. So it started on uh, Piccadilly over there, um, and District, and then you know we were talking about this earlier. You know you kind of start to discover you know a bit further out, and then you know then it was Central and Little Met and and District. Um, yeah, so mostly those, I guess. We did Big Met and stuff, but, 
you know, I think we did we did most lines, but those were the yeah the West kind of lines were the sort of where I began. Yeah. yeah. So think about a Bakerloo line, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's just something that really holds the, the the weight of graffiti on it. It's just, you know, just the weight you can go out in Queen's Park and then there's all the space in the world to be... <laughs> yeah, it was, funnily enough, it was right about that period. It wasn't actually that busy a line. It was busy for bombing, but, I mean, it wasn't so much for piecing. Yeah. I think the first piece I saw on the um, Bakerloo, this is quite mad, actually, because I was with um, Robbo and Doze. We'd just sort of been wandering around Covent. We bumped into Fade 2 from non-stop, and he was... Um, buzzing, he was bouncing around like a lunatic, he sort of saw us, he's like, oh, we've got a train running, we've got a train running. So we went down into Charing Cross, went mm. down onto the platform within about two minutes, in it comes, rocking the City Hall car. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God, that one! <gasps> yeah. And we rode, it, we rode it up a few stops as well, it was like nice sort of sitting on there, looking through and seeing it through the windows, because it, was, it wasn't a true top-to-bottom mm. hole car, but it was all the way up, and it ran for months. Mm. Months? Yeah. See, that is so rare. Like, mm. how regular would the trains be painted, how long would they, not, on, on average, last? It's, it was really, like, sporadic, wasn't it? Yeah, like, it was we, like luck of the draw. We had, when we painted New Cross sometimes, they ran for weeks. And, and yeah. I remember painting Uxbridge once, it ran for probably months. But then other times it wouldn't leave the yard. You know, mm. do you know what I mean? It was just, you never really knew. Mm-mm. Yeah. yeah if we, when we did New Cross, what used to happen was, obviously to buff it, that was when it was Big Mets running on the mm. East London line, to buff it, they had to move it up to Neasden. So oh, they had right. to sort of take it off, turn it off at Allgate, then run it up to... Um, but even then, even when it runs up on there, the people it would still run backwards and forwards for a little bit as well. But then people would be like... Who's these strangers on our line? Mm. <laughs> I mean, Who are these? It was quite, yeah, because it was quite territorial back then on the Big Met. It was very much yeah. like, this is our line. All right, let's talk about yeah. that then, because yeah. this has been quite a constant on the podcast. Talk to us about the territorial divisioning, uh, the demarcating of the Big Met. Well, yeah, I didn't really care about it. I didn't, you know, I, I mean, it was like another world when I explored it and when I started to, you know, see who was up on it and all that set free and all that stuff, you know, and I was like, wow. But I didn't really think, oh, I can't go on this line. I think the first taste of it I got really was we did, and I hardly did any walls between sort of 86 and 88. I, I think we maybe did two walls or something. Stop it. But I did a wall. It was a waste of paint. You know what I mean? Your paint yeah. was for trains. That was it, you know. So uh, we did this wall. Me and Rome did this wall in uh, like Northwick Park Ooh, or somewhere Poplar like Grove. that. Poplar Grove. Poplar Grove. Yeah. <laughs> and it got crossed out, you know, like really straight, like really quickly. I think it was Sabo. Uh, rest in peace and 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 some other geezer and it was like you're in our patch and I was like oh hello do you mm. know what I mean I so didn't... that's why you don't do walls because it's not you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then I didn't really under yeah I didn't really understand the territorial stuff around the big mitt trains mm. I just thought well, they're trains we're going to paint them mm. do you mm. know what I mean mm. they're big big trains and they need painting on yeah, yeah. That, you know? <laughs> and they get about <laughs> by the way at this point do not try this at home this is a nice little story yeah you know, we don't condone this stuff we just like talking about it it's a nice story okay <laughs> but yeah, yeah that i mean th- this was the this was the attitude of back in the day wasn't it it was you know well not necessarily i would so sure say so was, no. no so it was just your guys attitude well it's a difficult one because um because I knocked around with a lot of North London writers and they they were sort of um they'd go everywhere they'd go absolutely everywhere yeah. it's like um I lived I, well I, when I started writing properly I lived in Hackney mm. but then I moved to Peckham in eighty seven but when I moved to Peckham it was like a completely different universe of graph because mm. it didn't have a train it didn't have a train network the only line they had really was New Cross and I was mm. the uh, the person to go mm. in touch get in touch with to go to New Cross it was buses it was streets. Ugh. And it was like when you first moved down there, it's like you don't realise the extent that the buses are fucked. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, it was, and the hand styles were just ridiculous. Really? But like when you get to Elephant, and if you go down the Old Kent Road or you go down Woolworth Road, mm. you know you're in Tough Arts territory. Mm. It was like Cash, uh, Scarf, mm. Cease. Oh, and, but yeah, just like as far as, yeah, just went on for miles. They did have like dumps. Yeah, because Old Kent streets. Road is just one straight. And, um, Whoa. South if London it, was different. I mean, it yeah. was just a different... Like, it was like a different city, wasn't it? Yeah. Because it didn't have the tubes and, you know, and it was more territorial, I think. Mm. Do you know what I mean? New Cross. Yeah, it, was, it, was, it was a lot more self-contained. Mm. Yeah. I would say. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was, yeah, and, and I think that's... I think a lot of people, like uh, Artful Dodger, he's mm. Peckham, yeah, right? yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. They did feel like, I mean, compared to here, North West, it's, you know, it's seismic shift in... in, 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 in uh, cultures and uh, demographic, you know what I mean? It's like you've got to go over a, 
of a river. Oh, there you are. <laughs> it's a long way. Yeah. Um, but you know, they have their own. They had their own style and the whole, mm. the whole, the way of way of acting. You know, with the buses as well. Yeah, because I mean, yeah, you got the southeast writers, and again, they were nothing like the northern line writers, which were more southwest. Mm. Where you had like Shine, mm. it's like, it's like Sham, Prime, Devil, mm -hmm. Crash One Fifty One. Etc. 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 Colt Forty Five. Wow. And they were all like just smashing the fuck out of yeah Hang Seventy One. They were all smashing the fuck out of the uh, just past the elephant that all the way down to Borden and the lions down there were absolutely destroyed. Oh, yeah, like the stations just... were wrecked. <laughs> just, um... I think there was a territorial thing with, in a sense of like if you were just bombing, then people got the um that you were on their line and hotting up the yards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There was definitely that. But if you were doing, yeah, you know, and there was a bit of a division between, you know, like what Robbo and do, those were doing and say what Foam and Casby were doing, you know, it was a mm. bit like, we're trying to make the lines beautiful and you're just, you know, hotting everything up and smashing mm. the shit out of everything. Was that a, was that a, was that a, um, a, a Foam and to you? Was that a to you thing? No, 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 it's prior to TU. No, prior to then, TU. Before wow. then. But, well, back then, I would say TU was more of a bombing crew. Yeah. yeah. My, my first experience, my first, well, seeing Steam and Hell mm. was like, yeah, that was a lot of sort of swing, like uh, with the Baker Lou back then, it was like bombing, bombing, yeah, yeah. bombing, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, Maiden and a few others. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that was that was the main thing coming out of the uh, mass mm. and people like that, but that and uh, stage, but it was just people smashing the lines really mm. on the Bakerloo. Mm. But um, yeah, districts, it was more about piecing because, mm. well, nothing, well, you couldn't bomb it really because it, so, it was so easy to buff. Yeah. But it was good for a lot of flat surfaces. We used to love painting the districts. Yeah, yeah well, it's just a different look to it. But they got buffed more frequently. Yeah, you didn't get much running on a district. No, I, mean, I think because it, it was newer stock, it was just easier yeah. to clean. Whereas like the, the old sort of Bakerloo's are similar to the Centrals and the Northerns. Mm. Older stock, the paint just soaks in. Mm. So that's where you get the, you get a nice stain of the switch for bombers is <laughs> gold. Yeah, you didn't get a lot running on a district, it's true. But we do, we painted it a lot because I love the trains. They were just big and flat and, you know, they felt like surfaces do you know oh what I mean? man give, give yeah. me give me a description of because obviously compared to nowadays where you know there's, there's more trip wires and sensor and cameras mm. and ever explain the processes of, of of the simplicity i guess of, of getting into the arts i mean yeah so there wasn't all that because we're talking mid 80s now right yeah we're, yeah. yeah we're talking 86 to 88 when we really kind of hit it but you know it's like so it, what you didn't have all that but you still had, you still had to... The reason I like painting with him because he was cautious and we, we were careful. Mm. We don't want to get caught. Do you, no. know, you know what I mean? And mm. there were still serious consequences yeah, we, for we getting caught. Yeah, but we wouldn't run like fuck the minute we heard something in the no. background. It's mm. like you hear, a, you hear a twig snap or something like that. We'd run, grab your bags! <laughs> yeah. no, but although we did go to yards with people that were like that. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, you did. You ended up... Yeah. And it was, sometimes it was better just me and him because mm. like just one eye over each other's shoulder, really. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Quite like that, and then we could just keep like you hear that, you see that, right? Okay, bag up, let's go. But there was no, run, there was no running, just calmly. Because if you're running, you're gonna start kicking up stones and shit like that, and drawing attention to yourself. But we'd know, we'd know what we were doing. We'd know where to get in. We'd know where to wait and watch the yard and make sure everyone was gone. We know what time to go in. You know, each plot that we had, we had a watching point mm. where we'd watch and, and just suss it out for a bit. So we were caught quiet and and sort of. Um, thoughtful about it rather than just you know because mm. we didn't yeah, yeah didn't, we you wanted to pile in there 15 strong yeah we did that as well I mean yeah that was you know. fun <laughs> jeez 15 well sometimes oh, more oh. really it was, yeah. one, it was one time it was, it was an army yeah, yeah it, was, it was one time we turned up at um, like it was that was the thing. We did have mobiles. It would just be be here at this yeah. time, and everyone just turned up. Really, at the time and, uh, of the yeah, One of the classics was Charing Cross McDonald's, and yeah. we said we'll meet at Charing Cross McDonald's about ten, and um, there was a whole bunch of new wave there. There was like us lot, and there was a few others, and we all got there and we looked, and there was at least twenty of us sitting around the tables downstairs in Charing Cross McDonald's, and we just looked at each other like. We can't all go to the yards together. Fuck's sake! There's too many of us. <laughs> so a whole bunch of them broke off and went to Queen's Yard. Wow. And, uh, but on the way down to Acton, we went down to Acton, but on the way down to Acton, we stopped off at a house party and there was like a bunch of DVA there as well, so we hung out with them for a little bit. And uh, yeah, I think Chain was with us that night as well, but before we left the... Uh, still about Chain. 15, 20 yeah. of us in Acton, though. Yeah, night, no, that was, yeah, Envy was there, a few others yeah, were there. That was yeah. absolutely fucking savage to place. <sighs> yeah. 
But what I'm saying is, you know, the consequences were still, you know, we got, we got, well, we got away from Acton when um, Rome crewed and Angel did a top to bottom hole car. We did window downs, and there was what seven or eight of us in there. Yeah, that was that was a big raid. And and when those guys got caught, they got proper prison sentences. Like you mm-hmm. know, Rome got a year, so it wasn't you know it weren't fucking about. It was like yeah, you didn't have the trip wires and the cameras and it, but you know you got caught. Mm-hmm. And you no, got it was punished. it was caught, there was a few occasions when we went yards where. Um, yeah, we didn't finish. We couldn't finish. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Because so it was just yeah. too hot. It was just getting too hot. I think the yeah, last, yeah. Three, last three or four missions I did were here. We didn't yeah, finish. Yeah, yeah, I did one outline, I remember, three times, like top to bottom, peace, same war. I did it three different yards yeah. and just didn't get finished. Cursed. just starting to get, like, this is, you know, I didn't come in. It's one of the ones where you you're, you're painting and then the lights come on and the train, yeah, the geezer's yeah, yeah. coming down. It's like, right, okay. Oh, so, what's, that, what's that feeling like when, when that suddenly... <laughs> Occurs well, well, you know, more more frustrating when you're close to finishing. <laughs> really, yeah, yeah, yeah. are you more annoyed than fear? <laughs> no, I think the fear is the first thing. The, the annoyance yeah. comes later. First yeah. of all, you're like, I need to get the fuck out of here really? and, and keep my freedom, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and my life. And then you know, secondly, you know, it's like shit. Yeah, because the worst, the worst, the worst, the worst, starting to clamp down hard on people right about yeah, that time. Yeah. Sort of right about eighty eight ish, they were starting to. Mm. Clamp down on people a lot more. Mm. Though they would have people sleeping in the trains, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. To, to, yeah. to catch people. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think Cast got caught by that once, mm. where, where they just opened the doors, jumped down, and grabbed yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. Whoa, that's just the worst, isn't it? Yeah, it got a bit. Yeah, it's a bit out of hand, isn't it? It, it? it sounds to me like because you guys were the first of the generations to, to, to be out there doing it, it, they almost like wanted to set the precedence of a zero tolerance. Yeah, thing. there was an absolute, and I, you know, and I've said this a lot, you know, London's ended up with a style of graph that it kind of deserves, you know, because there's always been this no tolerance, you know, until recently, mm. I think, mm. I think it's changed now, but, you know, this no tolerance, we won't tolerate, we'll paint it brown, we'll clean it off, we won't, you know, we'll put people in prison. You know, it's always been that attitude, like, as a city towards it, Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? And that it hasn't been like that. And mm. you think that reflects in the style? Yeah, so I think you ended up like in the nineties, in my opinion, with this style which just just like a fuck you style. Yeah. It was just like, you know Yeah, diamond cut, bang, silver, yeah. Da, 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 yeah. Yeah, just bang. You yeah. know what I mean? In your face. I don't care if it's ugly, I don't care if it's pointy, it's there. aggressive, yeah. Yeah. it's there. And it's you know, and it's fighting against mm. that kind of, you know, that advocates of that, that kind of style? Because you you know, you, you Style definers are in the in the room. You understand? I think. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, know, you, know, you have to adapt and overcome. Really, you, yeah. do, you change according to um, your circumstances. Yeah. I mean, obviously, if you have more time in the yard, you can you can get away with it, and you do yeah. more. Mm. But but going back to that thing about you know that I think you know there's a lot of stories about oh you know like foam or whatever was you know was really horrible and he beat people and bullied people, but. It was what it was about was about good quality graph on the trains. That's mm-hmm. what he cared about. Yeah, yeah. Do you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? So he take me. He took me to Gloucester's for the first time. You know, it's like he took. You know, he would take you under. If you if he saw your photos, if he'd yeah, be like your cold little school yard. You know, yeah, and that yo, was hey, it. You know, yo, yo. <laughs> so <laughs> it was just you know. But then people like would go into Gloucester's and just bomb it or do some utter shit in there. And that ain't the one. And then he'd beat yeah. crap out of them. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because it's like. That yard is for piecing. It's for doing something decent. We wanna, you know, we wanna compete with New York here. We don't yeah. wanna be doing like. I remember, do you know mm. what I mean? It was about eighty six. Like, like I was with Rees, and he was. We were chatting to phone one time, and he was talking about Gloucester's, and he goes, "What I ideally wanna do there is do a sab case. That would be his ultimate goal down there. That's what that was. That was what his ultimate goal was mm. to have a whole mm. car like that done in Gloucester's. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, not yeah. um, Something. not end to end frops. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because totally. there was a guy, you remember this guy Kiwi that used to be in Gloucester's all the time, and foam used to write on the on the panels like, "If I ever catch you, Kiwi, you're dead. I'm gonna oh. kill you." <laughs> on the panels, so you see the Kiwi for up and this message from foam, you know. That's some scary <laughs> shit, right? <laughs> um, so I mean, yeah. That, so there was the conversation there about hotting up yards just yeah. based on bombing. I mean, the same thing has been said before about um, racking. You know, yeah, going yeah, to the same yeah. shop and hotting up because taking everything, which means makes it harder for everybody. Well, the it writers. does, yeah. And there was we did, we communicated a lot with other writers about that. Where have you been? Oh, yeah, no, we Who's always been doing what. We always did that. 
you know. Yeah, and it, it was it was a, yeah. it was a regular occurrence. You want to say on a Thursday, Friday, we'd be like calling each other. It's like a, oh, should we go to um, should we go to Barking this this Friday? And it would be like, let me, let me just call around, call mm. around. Oh, someone went in there and did a um, couple of hole cars there the other day. All right, fuck it, we can't go to Barking then because mm. it's going to be hot. Oh, and so that's that's the way, that's the way yeah. we used to do it. Like we had a network of people, yeah, yeah. and so, we would just check on people. All about Northfields. Well, no, someone got caught in a bombing the other day. All right, well, we can't go Northfields. Didn't like Northfields anyway. I didn't, never like Northfields. Arnos, I did like. Really? Always, yeah, got, always yeah. got runners out of Arnos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> I told you this was going to be a good podcast, man. <laughs> um, talk to me. Okay, cool. So this communication thing. I mean, it's just pre anything, you know, in pages, you know what I mean? Like, pay you know, phones. Yeah, 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 pay, phones. Yeah, yeah, pay, pho- pay phones and house phones. <laughs> phones. Really? And obviously, just yeah. be careful what you say in front of your mum. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Especially when you're talking oh, about going down tracks and stuff like that yeah, or um, yeah, yeah. getting into yards mm. and things like that. Because then, she, obviously, in the back of her mind, she's thinking, well, I don't want to fight. I don't. I don't want to be called up by the police and they've found your body or anything like that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like um, yeah. there is a darker side to yeah, it. Yeah, there really is a darker side. People, so again, don't do any of this shit that's being compensated. Um, uh, yeah, oh. uh, that is crazy though. That what did your parents think actually? What, what, what was it? Because you were young enough to, you know, you could still get grounded. Nah, no, nah, I couldn't. <laughs> really unstoppable. <laughs> what did your parents think? At well, the time? My, my, it was me, just my mum and yeah, she, I. She couldn't do anything, you know what I mean? From from sort of 14, I was off doing what I wanted, really. Mm-hmm. You know, to much to her, you know, pain and misery. You know, I was just, yeah, I couldn't. And I had, you know, people in my house all the time staying. Like, me and used to run away from home and stay at my house. And Crude was staying at my house and this, that. You know, it's like I had, yeah. So it was just, there was nothing. She couldn't do anything. Um, I tried, you know, I tried to... I had to protect her a bit, but I did show her pictures. I showed her some of the pieces, but I didn't say I did that. I was mm. just like, oh, look, I've been seeing these these pieces on the trains to see kind of what she would say. But, you know, yeah, she you know, she couldn't do mm. anything. What mm. could she do? What about you? <laughs> well, again, it was just, it was just my mum, because my mum and dad sort of split up when I was about 16. Mm. So, but I was... Well, actually, yeah, it was really about 16. It was, um, yeah, because my first train was like November 85. And that was uh, yeah pre ACR. It was when uh, I was part of a crew called Night Squad. Wow, and, um, that was, ain't even on Rock in the City, nah, is it? No, nah. some... and um, there was another yeah, there was another crew called Vigilante Squad, which was Redeem Twenty Seven and Dome. <laughs> Redeem no Dome used to go to my school, and he got into writing a little bit later. And uh, his parents, not uh, his and Redeem's parents, knew each other, and he told me, "Oh, there's this great writer down in Putney. You should link up with him." Mm. And they were both dead keen on getting a train done. So that's how we sort of linked up because the Night Squad guys were more sort of local writers, if you know what I mean. Like we painted um, like mainly the Beauvoir Estate around uh, the canal and places like that, mm-hmm. and um, they wanted to sort of branch out a little bit further. And obviously, like they told me about down on the district, yeah, we got done for it the first train. Mm. Uh, hop back over the track, hop back over the fence. Police were there waiting for us, mm. which wasn't much fun. Took us to the station, took us to Full of Nick, and. Um, all put the three of us in the cell. Please, uh, my mum was away at the time with a new bloke, oh. and it was like so. It, my mate's mum had to get me out, of, get me out of the cell, oh, drive me all the way back to Hackney. <laughs> and um, yeah, one of the coppers pokes his head and he goes, "Have you been anywhere else tonight?" I was like, "No, no. You sure." <laughs> no, no, no. He goes, "Well, we've had reports of twelve other places getting done tonight." Wow. Oh wow! And that's yeah. uh, what November '85. Wow. <laughs> Oh, yeah. We we thought we were being pioneers, but that's what it is because you're so naive yeah, yeah. back then. Well, yeah, and obviously the communication is fairly limited. You don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, we didn't. Yeah, you didn't meet that many writers until sort of '86, really. I think. Right? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it got. It, I think the longer we went on, the more you kind of understood the networks and who was where and what was what, and you know, it grew. But mm. yeah, in the early days, you were just you know. You were just poking about, seeing what you could find, yeah. and, you know, and and you might bump into someone with you know a bit of ink on their hands, and go, oh, okay, I know what you've been doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are your influences, gentlemen? Well, you know, you see, we're talking early doors yeah, yeah, here, yeah, yeah. UK and US. What influence? Who are, um, who are your influences? Yeah, my. I mean, the one guy I want to big up is Grace and and Fury, who were you know West Side, and and doing this really kind of like. Sort of influenced by Chrome Angels, like this wispy Bunlack kind of fucking style, but really fucking loved it. I, great yeah, hand styles, as great well. Hand styles, yeah. Great hand styles, yeah. And um, yeah, so they they were sort of painting in eighty five, 
um, down Sundance and stuff. And I was like, yeah, I really, you know, really want to paint as well as that. Obviously, Chrome Angels. Yeah, then, the, the, the other thing about Fury as well is like anyone from that era who ever went to Covent and came up and down the emergency stairs always go on about them huge, oh yeah, the big fat, fat Fury fat, tags yeah. on the Ooh, stairs. It was yeah. like everyone remembers them from that era. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, Charing Cross was just a the place. Yeah, Charing yeah, Cross yeah, was yeah. bad. You had the underpass where all the b boys used to be. Yeah, and yeah. then you had Covent itself, where it was like mixtures of like the. Uh, the rappers, the poppers, the breakers, mm-hmm. and the writers. But uh, the, the writers sort of came later. Initially, it was like you know, the dancers, mm. the DJs, etc., etc., etc. And the writers were more sort of Johnny Come Lately to mm-hmm. the whole mm-hmm. Covent Garden scene. And it was also Leicester Square as well, which was popular with the breakers. Really? Leicester as well? Yeah. Did you ever go to Spats? Yeah, yeah. Nah. yeah. You did? What was Spats yeah. like, Code? I can't really remember, but I remember going there in my school trousers. And my mate was like, you can't come in your school dress. <laughs> so my jeans are in the wash. <laughs> <laughs> Just get me in there, man. <laughs> well, I got in, and I kind of remember it, but, you know, it was, yeah, it was early. I know my memory is not as good as his, but, yeah. But, um, yeah, it was clubbing from sort of 14. Like, you know, not just hip-hop, but, you know, but, like, um, Electric Ballroom in Camden. Yeah, and, big up Electric uh, Ballroom, yeah. Yeah, Mud Club. You know, it was, it was breaking, you know, it was fucking bunking into those places from 14 really so the early just... warehouse parties yeah 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 what about you influencers wise my friend what who was who was influencing you coming up well the thing is it's like because a lot of influence came even before graph mm. do you know what i mean it's like for example like i have to say it's like i used to stop my old man was a brilliant cartoonist mm. he used to work at uh, dc thompson's home of a uh, Bino in the dandy and all that. So we what? Get, so we were getting hundreds and hundreds of comics Ooh. at home, and he was he used wow. to draw these mad cartoons. So I'd be sitting on the couch trying to copy his style. And um, actually, to this day, I do little letters on my pieces sometimes, and they're actually based off little letters he showed me showed me how to draw. That's when I was about fourteen, incredible. fifteen. He saw me drawing all these drawings when I was a teenager, and it was just like, well, if you try and sort of make the letters, they need to sort of thick and do this because obviously. He obviously had a background in knowing how to do lettering because he was mm. surrounded by people that were doing it. So he understood about balance and stuff like that that I didn't understand. Mm. Well, he was trying to get that across to me. So that was probably your main influence, huh? Yeah, and then plus um, late 70s films. Do you know what I mean? Like the dirty, grimy sort of New York stuff. Mm. You know what I mean? Like I remember when my mum got a Saturday Night Fever album yeah, yeah, and you yeah. open it up, there's a picture of John Travolta sitting there like that and he's got the big red and orange front behind him. Oh, and I was like, shit. what is that? Yeah. But then also, because like, I came down to London when I was 10 from Scotland and where I lived in Scotland, there was a lot of gang graffiti. Really? It was everywhere. What, it, of a racial kind? or No, like it was, well, there was, well, before I moved properly down to London, it was more sort of sectarian stuff because I was living between Glasgow and Edinburgh. Uh, but before, when I lived in Dundee, Dundee, and um, that was um, yeah, that was like t- that was split. It was all split up into different estates, and it was very territorial. And they all had their different logos mm. and stuff like that. So it was just graffiti mm. everywhere. Oh man, it's mad. Yeah. Yeah, going happens. back early, I'd say mine as well was like madness logo oh, and yeah. all that. I used mm. to draw that and those two tone characters. Mm. You know, before we heard any sort of electro, you know, street sound stuff, it was that. And then you know the graphics from that really appealed for me. Yeah, you know, I, I still remember all those record covers, and it was like yeah, you know, bunk, yeah, bunk, bunking style. off and looking through all the sleeves of record and, shops yeah, and stuff like that, and making a letter into a person. You know, I was like really intrigued by that. So I guess you know it's going back, and then of course you know the New York stuff, like the you know the early videos, Buffalo Girls. And yeah, all Buffalo that. Girls was like yeah. just seeing how it was actually done, but yeah. not knowing how it was done before, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. which was pretty fucking insane. It was like it's really considered and patient because what you see on Death Wish, you just see bubble letters and you don't really think anything of it. Mm. But then there's yeah, yeah. didn't even know it was Dondi at the time, just no. carefully doing it. That, that came out in what. Late 82, 82, yeah. but, 82, and then Wildstyle came out, but I didn't see that, I was too young for that, and no money either, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, so you were, what, 14, 13, 14, when you first, like, got... Yeah, the, 13, I was, yeah, yeah. when I started, oh, 83, yeah. But yeah, the first graph I saw in London was down in Peckham. Was that it? Was, um, I, was sta- I, was look- I was staying to look after my step for a six-week holiday, and we sort of, like, there was just... Obviously, there was electro on the there was electro tapes going around or whatever, and then there was um, she lived on the Cost, yeah, Costal Estate, which is down by Queen's Road, and it's like I remember walking past the police station, and there was just a green 
and yellow piece saying Zorro. Nice. And it was like, <laughs> and it was literally two seconds from the uh, police station. It was, well, the police station was it was super hot, <laughs> oh, and then I was sort of wandering through. So she, we had to cut through the estate with her, mm. but it was like all the little passageways had like bits of graffiti. Some of it was just letters with um, markers, but people were actually doing graph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like, wow. That was enough for you. Because yeah, and then you'd seen it become yeah. reality. Yeah, and then, yeah, yeah. So yeah. that was for, and then um, that down by the Sainsbury's on um, Rye Lane, which is down by where the tracks go overhead, mm-hmm. Peckham Rye Station. It was mm-hmm. like an alleyway, and there was another great big Zorro piece down there, and it was like there was a Woolworths next door, and I managed mm-hmm. to sort of get a can of grey primer. But then I didn't know about tags or stuff. I just did my name. I just did a will. Yeah, yeah. In like grey primer, drip like fuck. Didn't yeah. look anything as good as his. <laughs> but then that was it, and it was like. But then I found out later on. That Zorro was uh, formed London Giants, mm-hmm. so he must have caught onto it very, very early. Mm. Yeah, without question. <coughs> yeah, I think the first stuff I saw was like Gunnersbury Station, Chiswick around there, and it was maybe Zaki, like really early Zaki yeah, stuff. He was on it really early because we bumped, wow. we met him, we met him really early when I was about thirteen or something, twelve, thirteen, and um, yeah, and he he told us where a few bits were, and mm. then. Um, yeah, so it was probably around there, and then there was you know, hip hop don't stop kind of stuff, you know that oh, yeah. started to appear. Get back, get blasters, yeah, the yeah, yeah. grandmaster, super fresh, yeah. double D, and pu- all that. Puma stuff. states with like three, the three, <laughs> three sort of ellipses as fucking yeah. laces. But <laughs> yeah. well, we just yeah, I mean yeah, we were just making it, it's just making it up as we went along, along really yeah. because you know you didn't have a lot of reference points, you know so yeah. It was like you take what you could get, mm. but you know those those little gems that came from New York, like the uh, what was that what upski thing? Oh yeah, the Jelly Bean album. Yeah, Jelly Bean album. Mm. Like you know, and that, you, there was a, there was another one. I thought I think it was Street Beats or something like that. It had uh, yeah, yeah. It had like a piece by um, oh god, who was it? It was um, it was a Teen TM Teen TMT, and it said uh, too much. Yeah, yeah. And it had like a little Playboy bunny sort of uh, yeah. thing in it that was really cool. And like loads of hand styles, there was actually a bit. There was a part piece in there on the pack as well, but uh, yeah, didn't so know. Yeah. Didn't know it was part. I just remember it being fucking amazing. And just about <laughs> didn't know who it was. And all these years later, <laughs> it's it's crazy. You know, and I get this from the podcast quite a bit. How observant um, graph writers are, especially your guys' generation. You know, the influences it must be some people even like heavy metal. Albums, you know, mm. yeah, yeah, like yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, me and Score sort of touched on that because we both like things like the Saxon and things like that, yeah. which is a classic logo. The S with the axe through the it, axe through it, yeah, yeah. And um, the yeah, motorhead, the, yeah, motor, yeah, yeah, motorhead yeah. covers. And I used to like drawing um, Eddie from Iron Maiden with biros because you can get really go with a shading and get the thing. I remember doing one where it was a. Um, the eyes and the mouth, but the top of the head was like an ashtray with a joint poking out of it. Mm. And stuff like that. Well, I wish I knew where those scribbles were. My sister's probably got them somewhere. Uh, they're out there somewhere. Somewhere. <laughs> um, Co, tell me about the origins of ACR. Like, how did this, how did, how was this formation, how did it begin? And, uh, yeah. How, yeah. How did it, how did it end temporarily? For, well, for me, like, it, I met him at Sundance, him and Redeem 27, um, Sundance was just like a, a hoff like in uh, Hammersmith for anyone who don't well, know. Yeah, and it, between Ravenscourt Park and Hammersmith. Yeah, and nice. I, you know, I used to go down there every Saturday morning just, and it was like a pilgrimage to see the latest kind of whatever was going on, you know. And I bumped it's where I first met uh, Rel. He was writing Heist. He was spelling spoke, mistake. Yeah, he, was, <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't spell, so he thought he was writing haste, oh. but he was, he was writing heist. But happy accidents. You know, mm. He, you know, he made up for it in in other ways. But you know, he, um, I met him, and I think I first met Mean there, and um, and then I bumped into him and Redeem were doing a piece in one of the arches, and we and I'd just done something, and um, the day before, the week before, or something, and then we were like, oh, I like it, nice, yeah. And at the time, I didn't really, you know, I had a crew, but it wasn't really, you know, it's just something I've made Fraud squad. The fraud squad, but it was just, you know, it didn't really fucking, you know, go anywhere. It was just me and Rome and and whatnot. And um, and uh, and then, yeah, I met him. And then I think it was the next day I saw a Merc ACR panel running on the Piccadilly. And I was like, yeah, yeah, mm. these boys are doing it. Mm. Like, you know what I mean? It was like, this. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so how old are you at this time? Uh, 15, 16. Okay. Yeah, 15, 16. And, um, and then, yeah, he invited me into the crew and then we went, 
I don't know if we were in Uplinster first. I'll tell you what it was. Yeah, he remembers better. I'll tell you what it was. He remembers what fucking socks I was wearing. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was sort of dark blue and you had a pair of C-17s on. You had a white jacket. You had brill cream in your hair. I definitely had brill cream in my hair. That much is true. But... um, no, uh, yeah, you, you, I think you saw it in the way at Covent mm. and you bumped into, you'd got pictures because I didn't get yeah, pictures yeah. of it. Like we did it the night before. We did, um, like I did a Merc ACR, uh, Fume Car 138 and I think Keen 53 did a top to bottom whole car oh, saying Bad Boys crazy. 3. And uh, Rees went another car down from me and he did a Mr. Rees where he outlined the whole thing in a rubber duck. It was all dripping. Dripping like yeah, mad, yeah, yeah. dirty, yeah, fucking yeah. big fat tags. Yeah. And... Um, <laughs> Yeah, I don't think theirs ran, but mine ran, and you caught it the next day again. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Arnos, yeah, like Arnos, Arnos was great for runners. And um, yeah, you bumped into yeah, you bumped into Rees at Covent Garden because yeah, right? yeah. he called me, and he goes, "Oh, I bumped into, I bumped into this guy Code." He said he's got he's got pictures of your fucking piece. He's like, "Okay, cool." Yeah. I said, "Like, I've got his number. Call him. He wants to go yards." Yeah. And that was it. And I think it was pretty much that. That night, yeah, probably. Yeah, straight to action. It's like the ultimate yeah. text message. You yeah. saw him on. A, he saw the runner, and next week yeah, we got yeah. together. We're That's amazing. Yeah, 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 that was the way it was. And it, yeah, did a window down whole car saying all city rebels that night, and Dome came along and did a D one. Yeah, and uh, yeah, sort of. It, yeah, but again, like I say, acting back then was cushy, cushy. It was yeah, like we yeah. were we, we were there until the birds came out. We used really? to get off at yeah. South Ealing, jump over the tracks there. There was a little park there opposite South Ealing Station, and you'd walk down the tracks and then you'd pe- peer over like the the mound and you just watch and make make sure everything was cool and then just go in. But we yeah, so it was it was our favourite yard probably acting. We did some really good pieces in there. For how many years? For I mean, two. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Not that long. Yeah, yeah, we're so fun and barking, but yeah, I mean, and then we, yeah, we followed it up a week later at um, Arnold's Grove. We did a Them Incredible Rebels 1987, mm-hmm. which was like a whole window down a whole car on the um, Piccadilly. Again, I was just sort of walked along s- sketching it, but we had this sort of again, we had this instant sort of a yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, so I'd walk along sketching it. He's got like he just followed behind me, filling it all in. So by the time I get to the end, all I've got to do is go back to the start, start outlining it. Mm. And um, he was he would add a drop shadow behind me. That's and then, so you just rotation the whole time. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah constant yeah. rotation. So we got yeah, it done yeah. in no time whatsoever. And then approximately, yeah, oh, I don't know, twenty minutes. No, oh, pretty, but, no, yeah, it was, longer, back then it was like we didn't back, have any fat caps. Yeah, 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 just paint thin. Yeah. You couldn't do anything it was, in twenty minutes. It was minutes. Spectra and yeah, Hammerite, yeah. so Hammerite. Yeah, it was pretty more like I'd say under an hour. Yeah, maybe. And then just sort of blast a bit of bunty in the background just yeah. to sort of uh, make it look a bit more expensive. St- yeah, 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 totally. <laughs> and we yeah. were riding that the next day. Yeah. And um, we were just riding it. And we hadn't slept, you know what I mean? And we were riding up and down. And then we saw Hate. Who was it? Casby Hate. And uh, and I think one of those... Uh, oh, I can't remember the other guy. And, um, and they got on the other side of the train so they couldn't see it. And he'd done these really small letters and I was saying... Oh, we've got to go bigger, go over the windows. But yeah, it, it, was, it, it was runs. proper window down and it did yeah. run, you know, you knew what he was doing. Yeah. And um and we were like, we got a we got a whole car on the other side. And we got off and we we're like, whoa, okay. Because they had they didn't really consider the Piccadilly as yeah, just as a bubble train. It was a bubble like, train. That was what you used to call them bubble trains. Yeah, it's got no it's value. You don't get, you when don't they get points it, for doing a bubble car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a there was a hierarchy of trains, you know. What's the yeah, snobbery yeah, yeah. in that? Like a, yeah. like what? Yeah. Yeah. Big like, Mets, yeah. Little Mets districts yeah, in that yeah. pretty much in that order, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. I didn't no, re- Little Mets, yeah, big little Mets. Mets, yeah, Little Mets, Big Mets. Yeah, well, little Mets was the top. That was a hierarchy. Yeah. So, you know, bubble trains sort of only half counted, but they were like, oh, okay. That <laughs> and is the thing is, like, high class, you know, <laughs> yeah. to say, And the thing is, like, right. This is the lobster seasonal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cas- <laughs> Casby had the hunt with Rome about his E, because Rome, Rome one was like one of my partners, like a big time, and then, you know, and he did this E a bit like Casby's. But the thing is, you know, it come from Paris. Like, I'd been to Paris, and I was like, yeah, he'd be showing him the styles, well. and, you know, and we were like, you know, because when I first went, first went to Paris, Paris was smashed, bro. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's a different beast from Paris. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Like they, they, were ahead, they were way ahead of us. Sign and mm-hmm. Bando and, like, oh, smashed. Yeah. Colt. And, and the Durf styles Durf, were yeah. proper, like, BBC really. Crew. That's what I'm saying yeah, about, yeah, yeah, about yeah. styles developing yeah. through the culture of the city, you know. It's like a bit more acceptance in Paris. So Paris is a bit more kind of accepting of Graf. And I think mm. the style was developed in a much more kind of artistic way, whereas us, it was just like, get it done. Don't yeah. get caught. 
But, you know, yeah. anyway, Casby had the ump and he was like, because Rome was in our crew and he's like, oh, yeah, no, he bit my E, bit my E. <laughs> it's like it's just a knee, mate. Do you know what I mean? It's like, woo, it's a knee. But what's, yeah, what's yeah. the uh, what's the craziest yard stories you got, gentlemen? Come on, the, the, the hat, cat's out the bag now. I tell you mine. I mean, I'm sure he's got more. But uh, so we was in Acton with Mean and um, big up Mean by the way. Big up mean, mean. Respect PFB all day, all day, and um and we we came out. We got. We finished, didn't we? And then we yeah. we were going from we were leaving the yard at like four or five in the morning and old Bill pulled up and I was just like so I me and Mean just legged it. So the rest of them kind of so you got stopped, didn't you? Yeah, and me, me and flagged his yeah. way out. Me, of it. We split up into groups of two. Like I walked ahead of um, him and Mean and they pulled me and Fume up and obviously when like him and Mean saw me and me and Fume pulled up their instant reaction was like, a, oh, fuck. <laughs> so, we, so, so we just ran for this back garden, right? And um, and they chased us. And I think Mean went over first and then I went over. And and they had the hold of my leg and my rucksack like this. And I'm trying to kick this oh, old God. Bill off. And I kicked him off. But he got my backpack, which had the camera and all the photos on it. Gutted. Yeah. Rolled down this. So it was onto the track. So I rolled down this bank. Sort of reassembled with me in this, yeah. and and so we we hid, and they put on a proper search for us, like they had really? dogs in the bushes, like on the side of the tracks, sort of opposite Ealing Yard, and um and for hours they were searching for us, and we were just hidden, we were just hiding, because as soon as we moved, you'd hear the crunch and we'd been nicked, so I was. So my, my job was to keep Mean awake because he just kept snoring. He kept fucking falling asleep. And he was like... <laughs> How can you sleep in such intense oh, mate, circumstances? Tell me about it. I don't know. He found a way. He found a that's way. That's amazing. Mean, you're a legend. This is. is it. That's incredible intel. <laughs> and um, yeah, and then eventually it died down. And um, you know, we, we wandered back down the tracks, got out South Ealing, went our separate ways. And then I... I bumped into, I think I bumped into Rome, who'd been in the cell all night. Is that the same night? That was, was the same yeah, night. Yeah, they were, he, yeah, yeah, him, Crude, and uh, Cisco got and, nicked. Uh, they got nicked and they got sentenced for it. And um, yeah, lucky. I never got caught in yards. I was so lucky. But also, you know, mm. like I say, we we trying not to get caught. No, we're just you know what I mean? Be, I mean, we'd we'd yeah, be a be bit professional about it. Do yeah, you know what I mean? basically. Yeah. How many times you got caught? I only got caught for a wall. Um, and then I got a caution. I was mm. yeah. So I got I got raided once. After that, they raided me because they were like, "Oh, is he somebody?" But by then, like the trains had died down a bit, and the people that nicked me were local, and they didn't really mm. know. And um, you know, and they didn't were just going through stuff. They, luckily, I didn't have the photos in my house and stuff. Um, so yeah, no, I was I was all Blessed. right. Oh, I got Blessed. nicked for a lot of other stuff later on. Oh yeah, <laughs> same. <laughs> <laughs> What about you? What about yeah, these? Yeah, so twice for trains, once for tracks. But yeah. other than that, yeah. I mean, the one for the tracks was actually the worst one. Really? because Just because they just dragged it out and dragged it out. It was BTP the previous two times. It was regular constabulary. Mm. So it was a piece of piss. Yeah. So I mean, like, well, I got caught in Hainault. And um, all they were concerned about was Robbo. Really? Yeah, they were like, do you know Robbo? It's like, we <laughs> fucking, we're after him, that cunt. Really? Uh, yeah, and it was... Um, it was like, where do you live? And I was just telling them some bullshit story because I was in there with Reeves, we were bombing in the sheds, mm -hmm. but like they obviously caught wind of it. The police came, and I was, I was like, he ran one way, I ran the other way. He was straight into the coppers' arms. It was uh, oh, a bit unlucky, and um, yeah, they managed. They gave me a lift all the way from Barkingside Police Station all the way back to. Um, I even had a pen in my pocket, pen in my pocket in the cell. All the way back to uh, Hackney. No way. But yeah, we they, we jumped in the police van. It was one of those sort of minibus type things, and it was about eight coppers in there. And they were like, what are we taking him for? And he's like, oh, graffiti. He was like, does he know Robbo? <laughs> wow, that's all they cared about, was Robbo. Yeah, because he was absolutely destroying yeah, the central line. He was destroying line everything. Like, yeah, I mean, they, they, was, they were on, yeah, those he, two were on every car that yeah, went past. Yeah, it was, it was one of them ones where it didn't matter where you were on a... Like, if you was just travelling the lines, didn't matter which line you were on, you were going to see Robbo and those runners at one yeah. point. Oh, like, yeah. they were the first ones to get runners in the Jubilee... Yeah. They were, they completely destroyed the um, centrals. Then they took on the Northerns. Mm. Then they started doing all the little Mets. 
Yeah. And then plus, like, you had Big Mets running as well. They had everything. Yeah. Oh, my God. Big up those. Rest in peace, Robbo. Yeah. Give us a, give us a, a, a crazy uh, yard story. I wouldn't say much a yard story. I'll tell you, I'll tell you a good one. It was was... Um, Train Jam. Yeah, yeah. That was fucking funny. <laughs> what the hell? Um, yeah. actually, there's, there's actually pictures of it that were up at um, Beyond the Streets, like black and white pictures from that Train Jam. Okay. It's mm-hmm. like, I can't remember where we started, but it sort of led on to the uh, Little Met. We ended up at Edgware Road, mm-hmm. and then we sort of piled down towards um, towards Westbourne Park, yeah. and then we got off to Westbourne Park. There was loads of hundreds of people on the platform, and uh, that was when the um, train pulled up on the other side, I had a bag of paint. We were supposed to go yards that night. I mean, actually, this could lead into something here. Um, <laughs> yeah, but, um, yeah, it was like the train pulled in and everyone was like, well, there's nothing coming that way. I had a bag, sort of ran down, jumped on the tracks. I started doing a quick murk like that. And everyone else was like, oh, give us a go, give us a go. But five or six people started tagging. Yeah, there's a famous picture of it. Really? And then, um, so that got a little bit out of hand. And then we, I sort of jumped back up on the tracks. And there's pictures of what, people like uh, Chrome 307, Demo, coma and a bunch of others all standing on the tracks like this sort of posing for the cameras <laughs> and um yeah it ended up down at um latimer road so it, so it stopped being a circle line jam we ended up down at latimer road mm-hmm. and it was still it was still going off the insides were getting smashed and uh people were still bombing the outsides latimer road station got completely destroyed mm-hmm. and then it got to a certain point but certainly the older Crowd were walking up and down a platform telling the bombers to stop fucking tagging, stop tagging, stop tagging. I think it was Danny Francis. Really? And a few others. Well, tell them to stop. Yeah, just stop, stop. Because what happened was there was a train parked outside the platform on this side, train parked outside the platform on the other side. Mm. And it was blatantly obvious then. It's like, well, they're holding the trains for a certain reason. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, a, few, a few wise people, like myself included, and uh, mm. this young man here was... Um, Decided, well, I think it'd be best if we get out of here. Yeah. So I sort of, like we just made our separate way. Some people climbed over the side of over the side of the thing and dropped down. Mm. I went down the stairs, and a few others came. Yeah, Demo and a few others came down the stairs with us. I think Foam was there as well. We get get through the barriers and straight away, police van pulls up, doors open, loads of coppers jump out with dogs. I'm standing. <gasps> Like that, mm-hmm. but I've got a bag of paint in my hand. But you know, I just like oh, I just got to walk straight past them. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Like the the less inconspicuous, the better. Yeah. 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 The less, less you reacted, the less yeah. they're gonna. Yeah. yeah. But they they yeah. scattered, so they were more concerned about chasing them. And I was just like, oh, okay, yeah. I just carry on walking. And then I walked down towards um, started walking down towards Grove, and I bumped into foam on the way down there. No way. And like again, he was like, "Yo, where's cold?" <laughs> it's like because he just wanted to because he knew he was going. He's going you got you going yards tonight. It's like yeah, yeah. Well, right, let's go yards. Let's go knock for a couple of people so we knock for hate. We bumped into Kiss Forty Two, picked up Kiss Forty Two. Went looking for went looking for Demo. Couldn't find Demo. Knock for Scam. Scam wasn't around. Uh, found hate. Went to went to Foam's house. Kiss didn't have any paint, so him and him and um, hate gave him paint. Then we went down to Trafalgar. Got a, then we got a night bus to Morgate. We bumped into Max ITC as well. Mm. And then, uh, how are you remembering all of this? this is I don't know. I don't know. Well, yeah, we went into yeah. So we went into did the um, went into Morgate. Mm. It was like yeah, it's a mad place to get into. It's fucking mm. mental. Got in there. There was only one train parked in, so we had to sort of paint on the tracks. There was actually building work going on around the other side, and we just kept on painting. We started bombing the platforms, and then the, obviously the workers came round. They obviously smelled the paint. So, Oi! <laughs> fucking did a runner. Mm. And then I can't remember how far we ran. We ran quite far, but I've additional paint in the tunnel. Mm. It was um, all in a, all in a day's work. Mm. You know what? Mm. You know what interests me the most, fellas. Um, I mean, you know, first of all, big up foam, uh, big up steam. My brothers hear you. Um, these guys were forces of nature back mm. in the day, and uh, uh, and characters like them were more often than not, you know, that that they were they were such figureheads and um, such intense characters. Ones many people fear. Mm. There's a lot of people that come on here, you guys especially, you know, you, 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 I know age comes wisdom, but you certainly don't come across as the kind of people that would rival a foam or a steam of its oh. time. So so where does the respect come from? Because, like, you get caught up for foam all the time and it's, like, chill. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Foam, I mean, foam took, like, as I say, foam took me glasses, took me um, Farringdon, went on the train strike... Um, so we did a whole train in there with Casby and Foam and a sign and you know it's just, you know what 
the respect was that your pieces were good enough. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? That was it. It was like if you if you're doing proper full color window down pieces mm -hmm. and you're you're part of this scene, then you were on board. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? It didn't matter about whether you, where you were from or who how hard you were or you know all yeah. that. Yeah, all that stuff went on. Don't get me wrong. Like I got robbed in Lab Grove a couple of times yeah. when I was younger. But does that make you fear? Does that give you kind of the, the edge? Does it make you feel paranoid just to look on your shoulder? I mean, it's yeah, it was like that. Mm. Like yeah, we it was, robbed it was people. A lot more hairy I back robbed then. people. You know, I robbed people and people robbed me. It was uh, mm. that's the way it was. You didn't have much, and there was a nature. The, na the nature of the beast was, you know, hunted. sort of, you know, what do you call it? You know, the the kind of. Um, you know the 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 biggest animal kind of you know the, the, yeah, the, animal, the, yeah, the hierarchy yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. but you know silver black the alpha but you kind mm -hmm. of a, yeah I mean you it was horrible to get robbed it was horrible to get like you know fucking somebody you know poking you and saying give me you know whatever but it mm -hmm. happened it was just part of it and the, but the draw to do it you know it was an obsession for me it was like complete obsession so it didn't, nothing was going to stop me painting mm. nothing was going to stop me bombing not painting you know getting up. Because that was my identity, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, I, I was never really good at anything else up until that point. I was always all right at something. And suddenly I found something that I was quite good at. Mm. And people, you know, and you didn't have to be socially adept to, to get respect. You didn't have to go in and say, I'm the big this, that and the other. Mm. You just, you, you let your panel do, your, do yeah, the talking. That's doing the talking, mm. exactly. So you'd meet these people and it'd be like, I've seen your panel, do you want to go yards? It didn't matter if you were, mm. you know... Whatever, you know, it was just, you were just code, you were Merc, you were Foam, you were Redeem 27, you were Ganja, you know what I mean? Yeah, and we, we, yeah, just, plus, mm. yeah, plus the amount of runners we used to get as well, yeah, it's like yeah, people yeah. were aware of you, even if yeah. they didn't always give you immediate praise. Yeah. Uh, it's like they always pretend they don't know who you are, but they know who you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But does the, does does it help, because you know, you're nice guys, does it help if you're a nice guy behind the, or, or is that preyed upon, or is that, is, or does that not matter either? I don't know. I think depends who you know, really, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. it's a yeah. If you, know, if, you know good, if you know good people, like it doesn't really. No. If you if you go if you if you go with, if you hang around with people that are like a red rag to a bull, then you, then you're in trouble. Yeah, you're in trouble. Yeah. 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 yeah, and I and I avoided people like that. You know what I mean? I I didn't want to go yards with people that were shouting and, you know, I mean I was you know I did, I liked to cut the cans of tenants before I went yards. Don't get me wrong, but I didn't want to go. Yards with people who were steaming and were, you know, mm. were not careful. Do you know mm. what I mean? Were like smashing windows and mm. yeah, breaking because, in, going in the trains and pulling seats out and yeah. shit like that. Because the mission was about doing a piece. Yeah. You know what I mean? First. And that, that was our, always our philosophy was we get in and we do the piece. And then if we've got time, then we'll, we'll go and paint. Kill, yeah, kill your cans. Smash the yeah, rest yeah. of the trains. So then when you go home, you're not, ca you're not carrying paint home. Exactly. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. but you get in and you do your piece and if you've got a camera, you get your photo and then you, you know, and then you get out without getting nicked. Job done. You know what I mean? I don't want to <coughs> go in there and have a party mm. and start, you know. Barbecue, smoking <laughs> suits. <laughs> <laughs> turning up for knocking out. Yeah, because yeah. uh, no, I mean, a lot of people sort of say, "Oh, back then it must have been like a picnic." It's like, no, no, it we, wasn't. we were, we were literally. It wasn't. Set your paint up, do your thing. All oh, right, I think we can get away with a little bit more. Let's do a little bit more, and then get the fuck out. Yeah. But that's like, what creates profiles, isn't it? Yeah. It's like not being over, not not um, subscribing to the the banter and the extracurricular of it all. You want to be just. Yeah. Yeah, no, do that's what you what, do. It wasn't about that for me. I just wanted my, you know, it wasn't. Even, you know, did I want fame? I suppose we all do. But really, it was about an identity, and it was about you know me feeling you know like I'd achieved what I knew I could, and I might you know one of my regrets about you know when I stopped is if I'd have carried, I was just getting good really when I stopped. Mm. Do you know what I mean? In my opinion, mm. other people might say, "Oh, that was good and this was good," but I feel like I was just getting good when <coughs> you know the rate when you know eighty eight kind of. Came yes. when the California well, sunrises of, came. Yeah, and, sort of obliterated and, a huge, <laughs> whole generation of um, writers in um, one fell yeah. swoop. I yeah. think if I'd have hit, you know, if I'd have been doing trains for another two, three years, yeah. really would have done something worth, you know, um, talking about. Um, so it wasn't, you know, yeah, it wasn't so much about. Rep, you know, it was an identity for me. It was like my, it was my, you know, it was the way I found a place in the world. Because I didn't have one anywhere else. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? I feel you. Yeah, yeah. So Raven came along, gentlemen, as you say, obliterated. Yeah, and uh, work. Yeah. yeah. Proper jobs. It was like um, it was like a turning point for me because you get to about 18 and it's still, I've not got any money coming in. Mm. 
and um, you know, black people were people around us were getting nicked and sort mm. of doing get, getting sent down and shit like that. So well, you can follow that lifestyle if you want, but yeah. and plus, yeah, I was starting to learn a trade before I gave up as well. It was like, obviously I was getting my I was getting a lot of creative input from um, learning how to use a Mac, mm. and um, so I, plus it works. You're working, you're still working with letters, mm. but in your own in a, in a very different way. And then um, obviously early graphics programs like. Pixel Paint and Mac Paint and yeah. Photoshop 1.1 <laughs> things like that. Yeah. Early Illustrator, which was fucking shite. Yeah, and, um, I, mean, yeah, I, I remember them very vaguely. But, oh, that was that was on the little sort of seven-inch screen black and white Macs yeah. as well. It's so anti-intuitive. You, you know, you, you literally had to, you know, mm. dial in a, a yellow pages of fucking computer mastery. Yeah, and, and then yeah, so to the top of yeah, the top of um, yeah, well, I say partying as well. There yeah. was. Um, there was the whole thing of like the, the job I had where I was like churning out loads of ads. It's like one week you're doing days, one week you're doing nights. Mm. So it's very hard to develop a pattern. Your pattern was pretty much work, sleep, work, sleep, work, sleep. Yeah, so yeah, I lost yeah. contact with loads and loads of people. Mm. And it wasn't until I left that place that I thought things started to sort of um, turn a corner. I started to, and plus the internet came in a bit more and it was. Um, Made it sort of you can start digging around. Oh, this graph on the internet, <laughs> and um, yeah, discovered um, Digital Jungle. Love Digital and, Jungle. And um, yeah, I just sort of contacted um, I contacted Deck on mm-hmm. there, and I just sort of said, oh, I used to do this, that, and the other back in the day. I'm sort of thinking about getting back out, <laughs> and um, started doing a couple of pieces with him, like painting down Fulham and places like that. A couple of abortions, some real. Sh- in howlers, <laughs> but yeah, because it's everything. Everything was twice the size of what I used to paint in the past. And it's like yeah, you, yeah, new yeah, paint yeah, and yeah. Um, outlining isn't. It's not like riding a bike. No, you no. got to you got to sort of um, build yourself back up to it. Mm-hmm. And it's yes, yeah, so I was rusty as fuck for about a year or so, and um, yeah, then gradually through that, I think it was yeah, it was late night. It was about ninety eight, ninety nine. Sort of did about two or three pieces, and then about two thousand. Uh, Dex sent me an email going, oh, well, I've just this, this guy's got in touch with me. Do you know him? It was like, oh, it's him. Stop it, code. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. Goes, incredible. Yeah, he contacted them and said, oh, I see uh, Merck's getting out and painting again. That's good to see. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. So I, this is a pattern of my life. Like, you know, yeah, we pe- completely lost contact pe- with each other. I, you know, it's like I left school. I never spoke to anyone at school again. You know, I kind of got out of graph and I never, I never really see anyone after mm. that. I just went off. I got more, you know, more heavily into like you know, addiction. Basically, for me, it was mm. like the rave scene headed me off into a, mm-hmm. a path of self destruction. But like, hadn't seen anyone. I'd seen Jason G- uh, Ganja. Because he, you know, he used to sell me gear, mm-hmm. but you know, it's like um, hadn't really. And you know, I see Rome a bit. You know, we, we, me and Rome sort of went off into the dark tunnel mm-hmm. of sort of hustling of kind of you know that world. And and then yeah, it was only you know. So I, it was only I don't know how I even found that there was graph on the internet or how I found Digital Jungle, but I just did. And I seen these Merc pieces like what? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. so same I, guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we did some pieces then, didn't we? And um, yeah, early two thousands. We did. We did a batch. We did a batch for about well, two or three years. I was still quite messy in them days, like really, you know. Cause yeah. I, yeah. And then cause I, gradually during that, I think it was two thousand and one. That's when we got back in touch with Jason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although he didn't look rusty at all when he painted. It was like oh, he never stopped. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like he hadn't realised he never stopped. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a better way of putting yeah. it. It's like, Sure, I was in the yard yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> Jason, obviously, Ganja. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Big up Rest Ganja. Rest in Don. Ganja. King. Yeah. King Ganja. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, one of the tra- best trained painters London's ever seen. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. Listen, I, I look in awe online at, at Ganja stuff. Mm. It's just un- unmeasurable. You know, just so good. Yeah. And it broke my heart that he died because, you know, like, I'd hold on to... Like, I got clean. Like, I went off and I'd you know, bad spiral downwards then after yeah, those pieces and yeah, yeah, 2000. Yeah, we, we lost contact again it was yeah. like, because he just gone. <laughs> and then like 2004, I was like, yeah, he had me paint, I was in rehab, he had me painting while I was in rehab. Do you remember? Yeah. Me out in Kent somewhere. Was, yeah. So I was in this rehab in Kent and he's like, come on, we got, you got a Saturday away, we can go and paint Lakeside or something. No. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, a bit, yeah. a bit of therapy. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Everyone needs a friend like that. <laughs> No, no, what, no, seriously, Keller, this man stuck by me like nobody else mm. did. Everybody turned their back on me in that time because mm. they were like, 
you're just bad news. Like, you know, my family included, this man, like, he stopped. No, I was, I, was just de- I, was, I was desperately trying to find him for quite a while. Yeah, yeah. It was, um, I, I even went so, because he's, he's Brentford. Mm-hmm. And um, it, I, was, I was actually just contacting the, uh, like, the Brentford football forums mm-hmm. and stuff like that. I was going, oh, does really? anyone know John? <laughs> wow. Do you know what I mean? And it's wow. like asking people, then one guy goes, yeah, 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 I've seen him up in Camden. And I goes, I'll try to oh, get some, shit. yeah, I'll try to yeah. get some food and stuff for him and stuff like that. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. To let him know that I'm, did you do that? I yeah. didn't even know that. Yeah. Oh man, that's mad. Yeah, I was in yeah, some I was, emergency. I was de- yeah, I was desperately trying to find you. Yeah, I was in some emergency night shelter in Camden, Kings Cross. Fucking mad place. But the thing about Ganja, like, like I got clean then, so uh, you know, and mm. then we started doing like graph when I was not a completely mad addict, mm. and then I bump into Jay, and like I remember once bumping into him in Bush. He just got out of prison. He was looking really well and he was clean. I was like, oh, Jay, come on, man. We're going to, you know, we're going to do this stuff together, clean, you know, because our paths had always interwoven throughout life, you know, from 14. Sort of ups and downs and sort of... Yeah, and so I held on to this, you know, this hope that he would come with me on the journey and, and, you know, and kind of find recovery in that bit. Mm. Unfortunately not. So it broke my heart, man. Mm. You know, I hadn't seen him for a long time, but broke my heart. Yeah, and carried his coffin with with um with Demo and Chain and yeah 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 it's mad. Mm. Mm. Fallen soldiers. Mm. Mm. Fallen Indeed, soldiers. but yeah, because the other thing is as well is like when when we started painting with him in two thousand and one, he was hell bent on doing loads of pieces. He was just like. Mm. Get me as much paint as I can get. I was going in. We were getting yeah, big. Yeah. Order, we were getting big orders of Belton, and back when Belton was all right. And um, <laughs> sorry, Belton. Still all right now. Sorry, sorry Belton. Yeah, well, if you we, want to give me some paint, no Belton, so you know where I am. Like, I, I, I don't mean it really. Um, <laughs> yeah, just send them all over. Get them yeah. show. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so we we get stashes of paint, but like during that period when it was just me and him, I was sort of like I didn't really put up ACR at all. I didn't really. It was like well. As far as I was concerned, it was dead. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, even when there's just two of us and we don't do fuck all, it's dead. Mm. But he was the one that was really sort of saying, no, 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 you've got to put it up, you've got to put it up. Mm. Mm. And we did a piece down um, Fulham, we did a great big piece saying Creme Gan Code. We went oh. in the middle and he goes, right, behind your piece, just do loads and loads of A's. Behind me, I'll do loads and loads of C's. And behind his, we did loads and loads of R's. Mm. Mm. All nice. different style R's, C's and A's. Wow. And, yeah, um, he was well up for getting the crew back up and, and you know, yeah. kind of, yeah. I mean, he was just like a force of nature, wasn't he? He's just, you know, yeah, he's very everything addic- he did, yeah. he did hard. Do you know yeah. what I mean? You yeah. couldn't help but be drawn to him. He was yeah, magnetic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the best way I could describe him. And, you like, know, like going back to, you know, 87... You go yards with him, he wouldn't have a fucking outline. You know, those mad pieces that he did, he just did out of his head. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I couldn't do it. I would never do that. I would yeah. never turn up to a train without, you know, I did it, I think, no, even that time I had some scribble that I tried to do on the way in Farringdon. Yeah, half a doodle. Yeah, yeah, but he, you know, he'd turn up and just do that stuff, you know, mad, intricate stuff with... You know, checkerboard 3Ds and yeah, zigzag yeah, yeah, yeah. this, that, and the yeah. you know, proper full on pieces out of his head. The geezer was unbelievable. Dude, I mean, I, I, all I think of in those scenarios, if you're going off the top of your head, time is essential. If you've got, you haven't got time to kind no. of debate or, you know, yeah, yeah, question yeah. what you're doing. With well, sometimes that's your friend, I think, you know, mm. when you're, you're time pressured. I remember the first time I think we went Arnos and I did a CF rock piece. And I was quite, you know, it was quite early in my sort of train writing days. And it was quite a, com- you know, it was quite a complex piece Quite a technical feel. And um, I couldn't really see what I was doing. It was really dark and we, we didn't have much time. And then I seen it pull in. I was like, fucking hell, I did that. You know, because it, it was just, you had to just do it. There's a straight line, you do it. You got, you know... And I think that's or, or as straight as it felt when you were in yeah. the yard. Yeah. Like you, if you stop and study, you go, oh, that's but then you but you take yeah, it into the county and keep conditions. It's like, tr- yeah, graffiti wasn't about study, you know, it was you about barely see, could you? you want to see it. Yeah. You want to see it flash past. It was yeah. about, you know, that's what I used to when I closed my eyes at night from about the ages of thirteen to to eighteen, you know, I just saw trains running in the you know, in the back of my eyelids. Mm, that was mm, it. Mm. That was all I cared about was you'd see it moving and running in the city, through the city, that was what it was for. So it didn't matter if you, you know. Oh, I've just got all romantic, haven't yeah, I? Yeah, man. I'm just <laughs> thinking, man, I'm like, I'm like, man, where have you been all my life, Code? That sounds fucking great, you know? Like, it is, mm. isn't it? It's one of them, like, you, I, I, 
not that I paint trains, but, you know, far fucking from it, but um, to see one go past now mm. as a spectator, that's just, that's, 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 it's, 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 a, um, it's an honour. It's getting into a train with a piece on it, mm. you feel like the king. You're there like, yo, yeah, I'm, ri- yeah. I'm riding royalty here because I'm yeah. inside the car, I'm inside. You yeah. can see the, you can see the, uh, the, the back to front of the yeah. piece and you see all the deep... <laughs> you see the cloud coming up the windows yeah. and shit. Oh, oh, yeah, so. It's a blessed, it's blessed. Yeah. Um, doing it in the dark is no mean feat. I mean, you know, again, yeah. you know... You, you, I well, you, well, the only light you really had was like distant floodlights. Yeah. But other than that, yeah, fuck all. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, maybe if like there was um, sort of dim, yeah, some of the trains was quite dimly lit as well. It's like it was sort of. Um, yeah, I can't. How can I describe the lights? They weren't full, full, full um, tilt. They were just sort of just sort of very low setting. So sometimes, like in the yards, like yeah, like on or Piccadilly's always had um, a very dim light. So it was quite easy to see what you were doing. Yeah, but doing it to that extreme under those circumstances, it's quite easy. It's like quite easy to do walls. You know, Is, you know what I mean. It must mm. be like it's quite a. Yeah, people say walk in Trellick Park. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I do, you know I do commissions and stuff like not loads, but you know I get bits and bobs and mm. people say to me, "Oh, how do you you know transfer it from that to that?" And mm. I'm just like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do. Oh, you yeah, know, you yeah. learn yeah. on the on the hop. You know, you you were standing in front of this big train and you were like figure it you out. Your little piece of paper and it's like you got to get that up. You know, you just work mm. it out, but. I think, yeah, for a lot of people, that isn't a skill that comes naturally. Yeah. Like scaling yeah, something sc- up to easy. fill a space. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But, yeah, I think it, you know, we but learn. That's practice, mm. isn't it? Yeah, well, yeah. quite often I look at where certain parts of a letter are, like the corner bit's there, and I go, well, that corner bit starts there, so you go r- roughly there. Mm-hmm. I mean, sometimes you get it completely wrong. I mean, I did a thing last weekend, and it was like, oh, fuck the heat up royally. Really? But I, still, as I, so I had to go back and sketch it up again, because I hadn't painted for a few weeks, and I just like... Yeah, at this point, it's a caveat here. I yeah. do not believe for a second Merck fucks anything up. Like, like I've never seen, I've never said, always oh, fuck that up. No, why are you kidding me? It's fucking Merck. It's like, do you know what I'm saying, Cohen? It's like, yeah, you know, yeah, that, yeah. that works all the time. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just like, it just to me, it just seems like, it, yeah. It, uh, yeah. You know what I always say about him? Like, he's, you know, he's been uh, making shit colours look amazing since <laughs> 1985. Yeah. He, can't, he turns up when he's got brown, purple, Fucking salad green, and you think, what are you doing? Yeah, especially salad green. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? This is disgusting. And then two hours later, you're like, oh yeah, really? Yeah, you know, well, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. yeah, I don't know where your mind goes in no, sketching, I think, man. I think like some, you're on yes, another level. Yeah, sometimes with them colour schemes, a lot of it I've sort of picked up from. Um, like I've seen the uh, old sort of New York writers, like people like Des. Yeah, yeah, Chain yeah. Free and like people like Knock One Sixty Seven, and mm. they always did these dirty, grimy. The shit colours that nobody else wanted, sort of schemes. And I've always been into them colours since early days. It was like back in the mid eighties, like when people were looking for bunties. It was like you were guaranteed, like with bunt like that. If it was any, if there was any bunt like left on the shelves, it'd be olive green. Yeah. But to me, olive green was my favourite colour in bunt like. Like I love that. It's, it's just like like a fucking baby's nappy. Do you know what I mean? But it's like, I like that. So it's like, combine that with like a baby blue, and you got ooh. Yeah, yeah, and it works. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But yeah, it's just. Picking the dirtiest colours and um, mm. having the pop colour that just sort of comes off it and just having... Sometimes you don't know how it's going to look until you put maybe a highlight on it or put a border on it or something like that and you go, oh, right. Mm. How much time do you spend on sketching? Your sketchbook must be immeasurably good. Sometimes I've got, I go through different, different periods of uh, how I sketch things. I mean... Sometimes I just take a, I do a single line mm. with a pencil and then just fatten bits out and then I can get an outline together in ten minutes. Stop. But then other times, sort other times I'll just concentrate on a letter and then just expand outwards from it and um, do that. Another period I went through was like you get a ch- you get a chisel tip highlighter and you just do roughly the shape of a piece mm. and then just outline it and then just blow it up and then just go over it again on a layout pad. Really. And then just add more shit. And sometimes, yeah, I'll just have the nuts and bolts of a, the shape of the letters I want and I'll just sketch them up on the wall and then they'll just add the shit on the wall. I've done that a few times. Because yeah. you schooled me on arrows as well. I remember us having a conversation yeah. about arrows and where they, the, 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 his, the origin of arrows and what, they, what they're defined as within the piece. Yeah, it was, they, well, they, were, they were little battle elements, yeah. really. They were sort of, um, it's to protect your piece against the other piece and also to attack the other person's mm. piece. And but also you don't yeah it's about sort of also 
That's if, the mustard, isn't it? Yeah, that's, if, I, cho- I chose my name because of uh, arrow ability. Mm. Yeah, you know what I mean? like, yeah. even when you did KODE, it's like you still can get yeah. nice arrows and symmetry. Mm. But the, when I originally chose a name, it was like and, and changed the spelling, it was like the C slanted and then the D slanted, so you could have your arrows coming. You know what I mean? Oh, I was like, yeah, it was like I need I need a piece, I need a name that's going to have good arrows coming. All the curves, curves and the, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I hate the letters now. But you know, at the time, it was like yeah, yeah, that was so a good. big part of the reason for choosing. Name. But then the other thing as well is about having the letters supporting each other. <coughs> mm. So like if a letter's falling over like that, mm. you mm. have something there to sort of yeah. hold it up. Hold it up. And in some cases that could be the arrow going like that. It's just mm. sort of you do little things like that. Or uh, if it's leaning that way again, you prop a little extension or a pump or a uh, whip or something like that. <laughs> extension, <laughs> pump and whip. Yeah. yeah? Like this is a graffiti podcast, people. <laughs> yeah. Before we go any further. This is not a dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> Cosplay dungeon yeah. master business. Yeah, the, the rubber comes out very, very shortly. <laughs> so the dark version of this interview will be live. Yes, yeah, like ex hamster. <laughs> Couple of badges and a piston <laughs> underneath your end. Yeah, plastic tubes. Mm. Yeah. What's the future, gentlemen? What's the future for ACR? Uh, um, for me, it's at the moment it's just struggling to stay motivated. It's um, I don't know. Sometimes I go through phases where I just fall out of love with London in a way do you mm. know what I mean it's like it's been part of fucking graph life forever really mm. but sometimes you just look around and you go why do I bother yeah. but then like I say I make up for it by just getting out of the country and um, mm. I'll get inspired do you mm. know what I mean it's like sometimes you just got to look outside of your own surroundings to get um, like the sort of yeah to breathe again yeah. mm. do you know what I mean sometimes just even just getting out of London just sort of just going to the coast or going to uh, mm. going up north going Wales going anywhere do you know what I mean it just gives you a little spark and it gives you a little kick up the arse mm, it's a good you, don't, you, don't, you don't have to always go to New York or bloody wherever mm. do you know what I mean Barcelona is a good one as well mm. and places like that I mean for me like the crew it, it, you know it had at its height you know had some really really good you know people in it like Grand and Chain mm. Rel, mm. you know, um, few, Merck, few, ID. 27, and, you know, it, it was like, you know, it's a proper crew, and I don't think, mm. you know, it can ever be that, so I don't, you know, I've never been one of those people, I have thought about it, oh, you know, maybe get some younger heads involved and putting the name up, but I think, you know, those days are those days for mm. me, yeah. you know what I mean, that we haven't put anyone in ACR since no, it's, it's, it's Yeah, like I say, I mean, it's pretty... So we, I would say we're sort of semi-retired, really. It's just sort of, um, so yeah. It's just like yeah, it's painting a wall here and there, just like our little bit of fun, really, mm. rather than sort of like oh, we're all about this. We're not mm. pretending that we're nah. some fucking super crew or anything right. like that. We're just like a bunch of middle-aged men who just like to have a sprinkle every now and yeah. then. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and a shot of banana liquor. Um, oh was, yeah, banana, loop yeah, but, yeah, banana, <laughs> banana <laughs> rums in the in a loop cap. Yeah. That, was, oh, that was fucking lovely. <laughs> that was a lovely. That was a good afternoon. We so. <laughs> <laughs> who's in who's in Trinidad was slowly getting pissed on loop cap worth of like, yeah because you don't even drink no, no, no not the time I did it but yeah I was knocking them back and mm. we were well off to the you have to, oh, yeah. go away five minutes later I've got to have another one <laughs> got to have another one <laughs> I'm so glad I don't drink when we're painting though because remember we go stop well. And I'd get, I'd be drinking, mm. and then on the way back, I'd be pulling out the silvers in the insides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God. You know, and these are the days when they did have cameras, and it, you know, just yeah, you're boozy, and you start, yeah, yeah, ha- pen happy, don't you? I remember, we went, we went trackside bombing, yeah, didn't we? Yeah, from like, I think we went from <laughs> Ealing Broadway all the way down to Saffle. This is and like we ba- we burnt off so many burner chromes, but yeah. even then we just like looked at it, it's like. To do all this, to do all these track walking and all this sort of shit, you really need to be fucking dedicated. Yeah, yeah, we just yeah, did yeah. one little one little spritz down one stretch of track and we were like, that'll do. No, that'll, that'll do. We've yeah. been to a club or something. We, I don't know. Or well, I think we were just like drinking in the West End. And, um, yeah, yeah. And yeah, that was, yeah, it was, we liked, yeah, there was a train coming, so we jumped off the tracks and we actually ended up in a builder's yard, but we didn't realise the builder's yard had um, oh, German right shepherds in there. Fucking, yeah, and, um, but the thing was, because we were... <laughs> The way the way we went into the place, we were just like we hopped. We also went past where they had loads of um, vintage trains, but we didn't. We'd run out of paint by then. Yeah, yeah. So we were yeah. just like, let's get off the tracks. But yeah, we went to the builder's yard, try to find the way out. But the do- because we came from inside the yard, the, tr- the dogs were obviously trained to look at the gate, mm, mm, mm. and it just came up to us like, hello, hello, and then just thinking walked. that you were part of the furniture. Yeah, and then, just, yeah, then we just walked out. And it was fine. That's amazing. 
Yeah. I think we've got some, you know, trying to get some uh, late night burger van in Southall, and there was some Sikh guy there thrown up all over the floor. That was funny. Mm. Then we went back to your gaff. That was a. Mm. He's, he's trying to remember it all. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, no, it's sketchy. But now, I mean, like yeah. back to your question, like I, you know, I might do a co piece like once every two years or something. I do, I do Grimfield pieces. I do, you know, mm. tribute to Ganja pieces, or you know, or I do, you know, just stuff positive stuff. I kind of like to mm. use graph to bring a positive message, you know, mm. you know, stuff like that, rather than just mm. oh, it's you, my name, my name. Yeah, you're doing your workshops. Yeah, I do you, workshops. You do your photog- you know, photography as yeah, well. Yeah, mm. so I'm a full time artist, mm. but you know, I don't really paint that many code pieces. Although I did a sketch recently, I'm like, yeah, I really want to paint that. Oh, um, mate. You know, yeah, get out there and paint yeah. it, brother. Get out there. <laughs> I'm proud I, of you, man, because I know I, you've I gone from ups and downs, man, and yeah, it's great yeah, to hear that yeah. you're. Yeah. yeah, you're doing good. Yeah, it's been a long time now. Mm. Yeah, because yeah, the, the, the other thing was the other thing I was going to say as well is like when he was sort of sorting himself out, is he managed to get himself into St Martin's as well. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With that. Did the fine arts St Martin's. That's so yeah. sick. Yeah. yeah, that's good, man. Which also helps, you know, I, I, helps I shared, I, shared I, I mean, I uh, shared studios and chases. Is one of the members there? So we, you know, oh, we have you. a we have a graph chat. Chase is a good man. Yeah, yeah, he is top Chase. man. He's a he's a proper old school uh, yeah. Grove legend. Yeah, yeah, t- totally. Is he's been on a podcast as well. First generation Ooh, Grove. We've got Ooh. a little graph wall out the back. It's a secret, but yeah. ah, yeah. he's already invited me down at some point. So I'm definitely gonna go down. <laughs> oh, and check is he? That. Yeah. yeah. Watch this space. <laughs> Fantastic, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. We're out like he was out of fashion, eh? Code Merc ACR in the place. <laughs> <laughs> Super stoked. Oh, man. I feel a, a sense of relief having Don's in the building like this. I've been working on for so long, and thank you so much. So when we doing thank part you. two? Part two's coming here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the door's always open, tea in the pot, yes. drinks in the fridge. Uh, Killer Keller podcast. I like him without a fashion, all right? Don't talk to anyone I wouldn't. Crime don't pay, but neither do they. Stay lucky, people. Peace. Wow. Well, there we go.